Hello viewers, I'm SP and welcome back to A House of Many Doors. Uh, you can see here I was trying to just get through the Blue Steel Court stuff really quickly again uh, so that we could get back to our adventure. Uh, and this time we actually won the Dragon Joust in addition to having won the Archery Challenge because, as we discovered, our character is incredibly good at archery. You win bout after bout, awing the crowd below. The final round comes down to you and Baroness Mermelion herself, the Indigo Lioness, the Dragon Fury. To, to be clear, the dragon fly fury. It's less impressive than it sounds. She rushes at you, silent, utterly serene. You charge to meet her, the tiniest movements of your legs keeping your dragonfly under your control. Her aim is true, but so is yours. You shatter lances against each other again and again, but neither falls. Splintered lances litter the ground below. It is hours before she falls, the longest bout in jousting history. And hey, look at that, we won a second challenge. So, 300 guineas to Lady Blue Steel's favor on top of what we already had. So, we could now go and uh, mega curry favor for 600 more, and I think we will. Uh, let's go and have a chat with Baroness Califor. Blue Bottle Riders escort you to the palatial Califor shelf hold. Over dinner, the Baroness tells you that Lady Blue Steel must be made to reconsider her abolitionist stance. It is the right of the nobility to own thralls. Oh, I feel less good about that. I don't want to. Now I don't want to do that. <sighs> Listen, I'm going to trust that the Baroness... I'm going I'm to trust that Lady Blue Steel knows what's up. I probably won't be responsible for any thralls getting owned, right? And I could, tr I sure could use that money. Okay, and then we preach the word of Angle Crab. Hey, what a surprise. Doesn't work out. Uh, okay, yeah, we don't have any... See, it says this option's available because you have one or more favor, but we totally don't. I don't know what's up with that. Okay, anyway, uh, then I think we're good to leave, and we are absolutely just going north at this point. We need to head back to civilization and get some fuel. So, we want to go north and east. We'll head, we'll head through the City of Masks. There's no sense in going back here. We're not ready for the thing at Fargyle Keep yet, right? Is that right? What was the... what was our concern there? If I wanted to become a knight... I can't remember. I had to be a poet and then also something else. And we definitely are already a poet. I wish that this had a little bit more info in it. Well, for right now, I think let's just head north. Oh, jeez. Slave takers. That thing really came up on us and the menus were... it was just very overwhelming. The wasp's approach is signaled by a hideous, mind-breaking buzz. It dive-bombs your kinetopede, its sting scraping a line across the hull, and the crew on its back whoop and cheer. You see whips, hanging shackles, iron chains. Slave-takers, then, come to drag you to Scornvaunt. This is... okay. I see what's happening here. This is a dramatically appropriate problem for us to have. This is my bad, everybody. We will flee! I have failed a guile challenge. Panorama turns off your heart light. Banjo slams the kinetopede into into movement. We've seen this text before, and now the time has come for battle. Do we just flee? Probably. They have three guns and only 135 hull. Their sanity is steady. It's unlikely we're going to be able to affect them much with a heart light thing. They don't actually have three gunners. They have a thrall in this spot. I wonder if that's going to make them less effective. I and mean, we, we have to try to run away, though, right? Because combat's so expensive. We know we're not going to be able to escape this turn, though, so I'm going to drop a mortar on right there. Because it would have taken two more moves, or two more actions, to get away. So we'll do this to try to discourage pursuit a little bit. Hopefully distance causes them to miss. Our weapon was fairly high accuracy, so... Flee! Apparently we can just flee before... <laughs> it's a little bit like Earthbound. If the shot doesn't land all the way, you don't take any damage. Alright, we must retreat into the shadows. And, like, in a real damn hurry, too. Okay, I do think we want our heart light on, though. Yeah, it's like... It was dramatically appropriate. Alright, uh, the pub, there's nothing... Nothing for us here. So someone wants to talk to me. Smigs wants to talk to me. What's up, buddy? 
Oh, right, we hadn't done the Calaram run the Calaram run thing with him yet. Uh, I think it's story time. Yeah, sounds good to me. I wasn't going to ask that. They dumped you in a river, so you were shot to death. We know this whole deal. What made you think your gang were different? Tell me about the heist. Okay. So we need to get more rum, which means we should we should turn around and do that now, right? I forgot that we had not uh, we had not done that yet. This shouldn't be a big problem for us in terms of timing. I think I think we can cross an extra screen. All right, get me another Calaram rum, thank you. I do I do wish that you could do these things in town. Maybe you can. Maybe I'm just not seeing the interaction option. All right, uh, more rum. I'll help you, Banjo. So where do we need to go? Okay, to the City of Knives. And then we will wage a quiet war with him. A couple of times. Okay. I like Banjo. So our guile's not so hot. Uh, our spirit is pretty good. Panorama is actually um, not helping us at all. It would be nice to replace Panorama. If we replaced Panorama with a crew member who was actually good at the job, uh, our spirit would be in a really good place because of all the natural spirit that we bring to the table. We just have to keep fishing for new crew members when it makes sense to do so, I guess. I'm going to interact with these guys. Anything for sale? Godsmoke, Necrosia, Godsmoke... Eh, you know what? I'll take him. He can offer you a vial of Godsmoke. Fresh from Vex, he claims, and sweet as a summer breeze. Wait, where am I at on wait right now? Never mind. I'll take none of your things. Farewell. He spit at me. We gained an occult paraphernalia, which... Nope, I was going to say... Must apparently be uh, light enough for us to carry it, because we did start to move, but then we stopped afterward. Uh, well... We know the occultist paraphernalia is not actually valuable, I'm just going to drop it. It's incredibly common, and it sells for, like, nothing. So, wait, did we not write a report on Gossamer Smile already? We must have. Yeah, we totally did. Just the, the quest text on the map is reliably unreliable. So we need to go east at some point here for a couple of screens. Look at that big happy frog statue. Who could be unsettled in a place with this many big happy frogs? Frogs know what's up. They're not gonna. They're not gonna be happy if, if if they're in a bad situation. All right, I'm gonna go take this lumber and immediately burn it. All right, that's a whole fuel gauge for us. Now we definitely need to just get out the north door before the wasp catches up. Man, I do not need to. Ugh. There's a lot of stuff going on in this game that's pretty creepy, but a giant wasp is beyond the pale, sir. Alright. We've made it out of the forested area, it looks like. I have no idea where we are on the map. We got all detourinated. Okay, we have quite a lot of east left to go. Probably it makes a lot of sense to just go north twice, though. And then east until east solves itself. That's words. East until we've easted enough, is what I'm saying. Also, let me tell you something. I am not a big fan of summer. And boy, summer has just sort of like roared in with a vengeance, hasn't it? It is always murderously hot in this room. The, uh, the room I recorded in my current living situation is a, a little bit non-ideal. It's completely interior in the house. It's like the dead center of the house. And so it does not breathe very well. It gets, it gets absolutely savage in here. Also, I have already... I've been outside, like, for a serious amount of time once. Really? Like, basically this year. And I've already gotten a sunburn. I hate it very much. 
We're breaking the old house from another world. Yeah, enter a cottage, sure. Hey, look, it's some guy. Welcome aboard. You're a guard. It seems very difficult to justify a close range, like, melee type strategy. Okay, yes, we are now far enough north. So maybe it doesn't make any sense to take on guards, but it's good to have... I feel like it's probably good to have some just in case you run into a ship that somehow gets into just hurling crew at you range. These guys after me? They are after me. Well then, never mind. I was gonna say hi. But not if they want to say hi. I would, <laughs> I would never want to engage in any kind of social interaction that the other person wants to engage in. Oh right, the bats. That's a thing. Uh, you know what? Let's leave the, the tablet alone because we can't carry it. We need to get back to a place where we can sell things. Just, we're not even in the room anymore. Now they're just being cruel. Yeah, I, I probably have told this story before. This is not a story. I probably said all the things I was about to say before. Um, but I do not summer very well, and that's like... I developed a strong hatred for summer as a kid. A lot of kids like summer. You get to play outdoors and swimming and stuff. But first of all, I am super pale. I can, I can sunburn in like 15 minutes. Uh, sunscreen sort of doesn't work. It's, it's not super effective. Uh, I'm terrified of stinging insects and I've never actually been stung by a bee or a wasp so I don't know but a lot of people in my family are very allergic so it's reasonable to assume that I might also be very allergic uh, and also I just I I would so much rather be cold than hot it's just a miserable time this is like the thing you do because you must you must pass the time until you can get back to winter glorious winter uh, I'm gonna drink with the patrons real quick lost 10 guineas a one-eyed ghoul sits at the bar, grumpily drowning whiskey. He accepts your drink with a grunt of appreciation. Can't even taste the stuff anymore, admits the ghoul. A patch of skull gleams through his scalp. And it doesn't get me drunk, but I like the feel of a glass in my hand. We've definitely had that text. Drink in silence. Gain some sanity. That's me being smart enough to remember <laughs> the conversation that I had with Banjo about how everybody hates to be asked how they died. That said, this interaction didn't result in me getting laid, so maybe it wasn't actually better. Uh, let's swing through the City of Masks on the way up to the City of Keys. Yeah, just like hard north for a while, and then we'll we'll figure everything else out from there. Because I don't... Do we have a report from the City of Masks? I don't think so. Uh-oh. It's one of those... One of those church vessels. They do look super cool, though. Uh, stare down into the well. Divine Scrutiny Abja. After a long time, you manage to look away. You feel emptier than before. Okay, a point of Divine Scrutiny might be a good thing. Also, I probably could have bought fuel there. I should have... Oh, no, they, they don't really have shops at Old Hollow, though, do they? Oh, God. Okay, well... I'm going to issue them some terrible threats. We are very... We're very gritty these days. I think we can handle this. You issue some particularly inventive threats over the radio, and also draw attention to the size of your guns. It's true, one of the guns is quite large. A long silence, a hiss of static, a dour swear word from the collectors. And then the airship turns ponderously to leave. Yeah, that's right, you get out of here. Bluster wins the day once again. It's a very effective tool. Well, I guess let's stop and stare down into the well. Okay, even more divine scrutiny. Do I want to be scrutinized by Abja? It's a great question. I don't remember which god Abja is, so, so I can't really answer it. It might be the case that this is a really bad thing. Sure, search for a drink. Okay, nothing. We might be able to take that train on account of it's so small, but you know, you can mount a lot of guns on the front part of the train. Okay, uh, so an Aranax Silk and a Warding Iron we do not have. Uh, we can visit Lady, Lady Nictamine. Have we picked up anything to sell though? No, we haven't. Oh, we do have a glimpse of another world. I will sell that. They seem to be pretty easy to come by. Uh, and then... 
take some hull repairs. It's not too expensive. So it's not like 45 per point. It's like there's a base repair value and then and then there's a per point cost. So it's not necessarily a great idea to try to repair your hull when it's high. That's a different sort of balance, but it's probably it's probably a good idea. All right, uh, one performance troop in Brandonazzo Pla uh, Brandonazzo Plaza has attracted quite a crowd. Oh, the Lily in the Marsh thing. Uh, yeah, let's donate and strike up a conversation. It's a fascinating take on the play. I mean, it was fascinating the first time. It's still fascinating now. Strike up a conversation with the man who played the Specter of Death. Well, the knight's death is a subversion of the narrative, etc. Do we want to make a counter-argument, or do I want to just reflect on mortality? Now, let's make a counter-argument. I'm curious if we could pass this. Nope. You try to demonstrate in conclusive terms why the knight's death makes sense. What was justified by the sun in his eyes during the ambush, by the wound he received two nights before. You take the specter through the logic of what happened. The specter acknowledges your points, and you part from him with a smile. Well, alright, I enjoyed the performance at least. Let's advertise for a new crew member. We're doing alright on cash. Uh, I... D we got some options, but they all replace people that I like. So we'll take on a junior engineer. And then I guess we're just gonna check the shops. So, fuel. Easy to buy. Okay, so we don't need to buy the silk now, but we will buy some silk at some point. Lumber's not actually that valuable, it turns out. I mean, it's better than... We could sell the lumber and buy a fuel and net something off of it, but it doesn't feel great. I mean, I guess I will. We're at, at the same time, we're compressing some weight, right? Fuel is not as heavy as lumber. St. Liber's Plaza. Uh, yep, just books. Adam Sadie's Boutique. Whiskey and Laudanum. Okay, well, well, shit. Uh, I guess let's... Let's, let's leave and go north. It's actually really hard to find people to buy your garbage. Oh good, a golem. Uh, do you have anything interesting for sale? Fargyle whiskey? Nope. Very little value. And we also, like, we know so many places to get it should we need it. So we gotta go buy some warding iron. We know that we need that. And obviously we need to go to the City of Knives for Banjo anyway. Was the City of Knives where the... It was either there or the, um, the City of Angels. They're both beyond the keys. I really wish I felt like it was worthwhile to engage in combat. Cause I mean, like, the system's interesting. There's stuff going on there. It's just so hard to justify. I do still really like the, um, the light and shadow stuff. I think it looks really cool. No sense in trying to interact with the naughty doctors. We're almost there, I th think. I was expecting us to have arrived. A returning expedition. The crew are ragged remnants, dying or raving. The hull is gouged and scarred, and the captain is a quivering mess in the long, slow process of falling apart. She was an explorer once, she says, now on her way back from some distant place of which she will not speak. There are some things she will speak of, though. And let's face it, you're curious. Her voice is cracked. She tells you of blood that's still only half-dried, sticky on the floor. She speaks of old friends turned monstrous, a civil war fought in cramped corridors with tiny daggers, a mutiny born of madness. A mutiny never put down, with culprits never punished. She smiles, and you notice the knife at her belt. The darkness swallows her words. Move on, before it swallows you too. So she's having a rough day, is basically what we learned from that. Are we... are we going... okay, yes. We are almost there. I don't know. Maybe this is unreasonable, but I get nervous out here in the dark for too long. Alright. Uh, customs men. We are going to attempt to hide everything as best we can? Now, I'm gonna let them find my obscene booklet, because it's almost worthless. 
Oh, I say! The taller one turns red as beetroot. The small one laughs filthily. Okay, 50 gold, a reputation in my booklet. That's a little bit of a shame. Uh, they haul you to a dingy cell and spend hours quizzing you about your movements. Okay. Uh, so, let's visit my dwellings. It's been a minute. We could write some poetry real fast. We got some horrifying ordeals and whatnot. Uh, I hate the subterranean billy goat behind the bear. I am lifted to this poem by Havoc and Gore, the wife of Havoc and Chthonic heirs. The goat of carnage is staring unsure. Listen, rhyme schemes are difficult, and this poem's about a goat, so you gotta cut me some slack, right? It's, it's very hard to rhyme when talking about goats. They're just so majestic. How about a grand epic? 48 lines long. It's not really that grand. The gold ravens of the city of masks. The bruise of sin is calling bone, as nice as your son and as your killer just. Always pass grateful into ca gallant bone, the son of sin and gilded lust. Uh, for the record, bone does not rhyme with bone. That's the same word. All right, one more. One more quick meditative elegy. <laughs> you know, just, just real fast here. The Eulogy of the Hall's Mortality. I mean, it's a pretty short one. I miss your sublime neck, now lost in will, the mother of death and foul shreds, the drowned hall of time that knows no chill in ancient time before mirrors did dread. I hate, I hate a hall that has no chill. All right, let's entertain a guest. Let's invite Panorama, maybe? It would be cool if Panorama were good at her job, since apparently we're never going to lose her. Panorama has brought you a cracked bottle of whiskey and a cake. She thrusts them into your hands as you open the door. Uh, for you, she mumbles. The good eye glares. The other, as always, looks at something behind your head. I like your home, but the walls are on fire. You should get that scene to. When she finishes the last slice of cake, she stands up to leave. You're a lovely young thing, she says. You're going to make a graveyard very happy one day. All right, maybe I like her. She's kind of a delight. Uh, let's gather news, because that's easy enough to do. It's good to be up to date. Go to the key details, because we have, for them, some very important information. Let's complete our assignment. Good work as ever, says Ambiguity. He or she sets the paper aside and leans closer. We received a very interesting message recently. Very interesting indeed. A member of the Unnamed Society wants to meet us in Clayton's Mill. Apparently, they have a story we won't be able to resist. Okay, we can do that. I can go to Clayton's Mill. I know where that is. Who says I don't? Let's uh, submit our reports here real fast. I like this very much. Look at all of this stuff. Dozens of letters lauding my article. It's incredible. And yeah, we're making really good money now. Ambiguity gives your story a double-page spread in the paper's new foreign affairs section. Although her or his face is as impassive as ever, some sixth sense detects immense approval and is the same text for all of them. All right, back to the streets. Back to pounding the pavement, hit the, hitting them bricks. Uh, I don't. We don't have any information to sell here because we already sold our. Oh, do we have two glimpses of another world? Well, sh I'll, yeah, I'll give you one too. Why not? Do I have more information to sell? Do I have another glimpse, perhaps? No. Okay. Uh, then thank you very much for your time, Mr. Governor's Man. I'm going to try advertising for a new crew member. Okay, Seven Spirit, Three Esoterica, Genevieve Call. She won't talk about her past, but she expounds with great enthusiasm on all manner of sciences and philosophies. When she smiles, you see a glint of fang. When she talks to you, her eyes drift to your neck. Okay, I know I was just coming around on Panorama. I do think Panorama is actually kind of a delight. But also, uh, Genevieve Call is super my type, and that's a real gross reason to hire someone, but it's the reason we're doing it. Also, you know, stats and stuff. Stats are also important. Uh, and then... What else do we need to do here before we leave? And we could go to the black market... Uh, what are you selling today? Toad skin and necrosia. Don't think we need either of those things. What are you buying? Just necrosia. 
Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, I should go. I don't want to be here anymore, let's be honest. Uh, let's visit the SB Museum of Natural Unnatural Curiosity. So, what we should probably do is donate some things that are, um, expensive or heavy. Let's donate our dead dangerous beast. I know that... I don't remember where we were going to be able to sell this. But the dead dangerous beast is not worth all that much, and we still have the alive beast, right? The dangerous beast has been taxidermied into a pose of roaring threat. Its glass eyes point in opposite directions, which rather ruins the effect. Guys, come on. Uh, the exhibits themselves are mostly hideous. Will it pass its government inspection? Yes, we have an acceptable conformity to regulations. For the moment. Uh, what else could we throw up? We could give them our indecipherable tome. I don't really know what else to do with it. We have a hard time deciphering them. Why not? An indecipherable tome is on display alongside Professor Monsoon's attempted translation. His efforts are not particularly convincing. Okay, uh, and then also, like, an embalmed corpse? Lies in its open sarcophagus. Excellent fuel for the children's nightmares when the place is open. Uh, Elga declares the museum only somewhat peculiar. Okay, we're making progress on that. I do want to please Elga for some reason. More embalmed corpses. That's the answer. And also... An arcane codex? Do we need this? I'm gonna I'm gonna donate it. Two arcane coda are displayed on lecterns, their pages rustling and whispering. I would have expected the proper plural there to be codices. Hmm. Well, I don't need these bones. Y'all want some bones? We have so many collections of old bones. Uh, Elga declares the museum eccentric and occasionally disturbing. She seems satisfied. So what we need now is some beauty. I don't exactly know where to get some beauty. We'll figure that out eventually. Uh, and then we just wander the streets for a while. It's always a good use of our time. A watch officer stops you as you wander toward the dead zone that surrounds the howling pits. He's sweating under his waxed mustache. No entry, he says in a tight voice. Something escaped from the pits last night. Again. The governor's men are taking care of it. Screams echo over the rooftops. Inhuman, keening cries familiar to anyone who spent time near the pits. The watch officer's hands shake as he lights his pipe. Uh, I'm going to offer to stand watch instead. It's unlikely that we'll succeed, but like, what would be the downside of failure, right? With every fresh scream, the watch officer's face becomes a little paler. You offer to take over for the night. After all, he's probably needed elsewhere. He attempts to not appear overly grateful. Hours of watchfulness later, a man and a woman melt from the shadows on either side of you. The man is tall and broad as a coffin. The woman is shorter and holds a strange-looking pistol in her left hand. Did you see it? She gestures toward the rooftops with her gun. You hesitate, and she instantly forgets your existence. They take off down the street at a run. After, you never hear word of the monster that escaped, nor of the man and woman who pursued it. But then, the governor's men are always discreet. Ah, oh, we missed... we missed the thing. That's a shame. That would have been a fun, uh, a fun story. So we still need warding iron, relic, three sacks of salt, and we you, we can buy salt here, right? So we still need to figure out how to get an occult relic. We've seen occult things, but no relics. Also, where am I supposed to be dropping this passenger off? Uh, concerns. City of Knives. Oh, hey, what a coincidence! I was just headed to the City of Knives. Let's go, shall we? Uh, so... The City of Knives is north, right? We can swing through Kennedy Yard, but there's no reason to. Yeah, north or east. Either one really works. I feel like we do this route a lot. I mean, there's just so many fascinating reasons to go to the City of Knives. Sorry, first of all, we should, um... I'm gonna sell the hazard coffee we have. We don't need it. Uh, oh, you can buy warding iron right here for 470. I don't know why I didn't realize that. I mean, it's probably because I'm, you know, kind of a dumb guy. Uh, do we want to sell our ancient grimoire rather than rather than putting it to use? I guess so. Rather than putting it in the museum, I mean. 
We, we really want to put some things that are beautiful in the museum at this point. I'm going to just sell this, both for the money and to make room. And then, uh, what else do we want to do? Intercellular essentials. I mean, give me a little more fuel. Uh, faster engine. We do have the money. Also, the bo an extra boxcar wouldn't be terrible. But I kind of think I want to buy some upgrades. So, uh... Well, that's a trophy slot. Let's turn those up to scuttlers. Increases speed and fuel efficiency by 20%. Hooray! And we've actually got access to another upgrade even, but I don't see any reason to take it. Not right now. It'll, that'll put us too low on cash. I think we're probably okay to go then. Yeah, we don't need another boxcar now. Not right now, anyway. So, north. And we pretty much just go northeast, right? Just one for one north and east. Yeah, let's say hi to our new crew member. When she talks to you, her eyes drift to your neck. Then she catches herself, and her mouth quirks naturally into a sardonic smile. Ask if she knows anything about the City of Glass. Ah, the City of Glass, Genevieve smiles. I might know a little something about that, but why should I tell you? I mean, that said no luck, but I think that that might have been a hint that there might be some luck in the future. You know. Uh, Genevieve invites you to her quarters for wine and philosophy. Ah, sounds like we might be getting lucky right now. Genevieve smiles, a glint of fang at the corner of her mouth. It is nice to finally be surrounded by people of above-average intelligence, she says. When you go to pour, uh, pour her a glass, she places her hand over the rim. I do not drink wine. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna take it easy on this. We'll get to the obviously a vampire thing. Let's ask about her past. I am what you might call an eternal student, says Genevieve, a smile playing at her lips. But my favorite areas of study are psychoanalysis, moral philosophy, and the occult. Most recently, I worked as a therapist in Twilight Gardens, where I discovered that rich people are broken in the most tedious ways. They could be a real pain in the neck. Uh, yeah, sure. How about the occult? Let's talk about the occult. I have an interest in that. Oh, I have an unnatural predilection for the occult, says Genevieve, smiling. But I prefer to study it academically. I'm not much of one for rituals and sacrifices and such nonsense. And there is a consistent science behind it, no matter what the traditionalists would have you believe. She talks at length about various thaumaturgical theories, pausing only occasionally to pour you more wine and, <laughs> and brush your collar away from your neck. She <laughs> she's really laying it on. All right, let's talk about moral philosophy. Oh, I've actually written a book on the subject, says Genevieve, trying not to sound too impressed with herself. Conventional publishers were not ready, so I funded the printing myself. Imagine if a thousand people are mildly inconvenienced by allowing one person to live. And by mildly inconvenienced, I mean, for example, a distracting thirst. Well, we would probably say that the moral thing to do is to let the one person live and let the rest go thirsty. She leans toward you intently, eyes lingering on your neck. But what if there are a million thirsty people? A billion? What if the sacrifice is an old man? A suicidal man? A criminal? When does it become morally acceptable to sacrifice one for the convenience of others? All right, we gotta be very careful how we, how we answer this. Uh, let's say... This ethical problem seems... You know what, I'm just gonna confront it. This ethical problem seems a bit, I, I don't know, vampire-y? It's the kind of problem a vampire would have. You know, like, like you. You're a vampire. What? Splutters Genevieve. How did you... What, what gives you the, the very suggestion? She has the boggled, wounded expression of a fish that has been pulled from the water and used to slap someone. Fine, she snaps, deflating. I'm a vampire, and obviously a more indiscreet one than I hoped. But before you fetch your torch and pitchfork, I want to assure you that you have nothing to fear from me. I am abstinent. I do not drink blood. Gained one droll recollection. I mean, she... I don't trust you, right? 
I don't trust you. Then fire me, she says, or give me the chance to prove that I can, in fact, be trusted. But if you choose not to fire me, could you drop me off at the Scars of Sheng? I have a meeting to at attend with my, um, abstinence support group. She gives you a tight-lipped smile, as though suddenly more self-conscious about her fangs. So maybe she's going to Vampire AA, but I don't... I don't know. We're absolutely going to flirt with her. A certain smile, a lingering look, gauge her openness to a relationship. You never know where it might lead. Perhaps to exsanguination. Genevieve responds to your overtures with polite small talk. But you catch her, you catch, you catch her casting lingering gazes your way over the next few days. Okay, so we need more relationship with her first. That's fine. That makes sense. So we know where the Scars of Shang are. We haven't been there. That's that place that's like way out to the east, right? But we at least have it marked on our map already. Maybe we can, can scoot around to there. Uh, enter the cottage. A test of spirit. Look how good my spirit is. Success is more likely than not, and we pass. Uh, welcome aboard, Junior Engineer. I could use more graft. You can never have enough graft. All right, where are we relative to our goals here? I mean, we don't we don't actually need to go to Kennedy Yard, so I think it's fine to just continue on this northeastern plan. So will drop us right at the City of Knives. I do wish that there was a little bit more... <sighs> I hate to say this, because I know that this game was the work of a pretty small number of people. And, and like one guy responsible for basically all of the writing and also coding. But I do kind of wish there was just like a little bit more of everything. You know, we're seeing a lot of the same text over and over again. It's There's not that much music. I like the way the the rooms are sort of like procedurally generated out of these little pieces. And it doesn't... I think it works thematically that you see the same bits of room over and over again just endlessly, um, endlessly reshuffled. It, it gives you the sense that this is a place that would be very hard to remember your way around or navigate. And like that extremely works, right? But, especially, like, the music's good. I wish there was more of it, in part, because I just want there to be more. <laughs> just want to hear more of it. All right, let's drop off our passenger. Easy enough there. Pick up a new passenger who's bound for Scornvaunt. Well, I mean, I'll see what I can do. Let's gather some news. May as well. The poison flows, etc. Uh, wander the streets a bit before we report uh, Banjo's murder. As ever, we just look around and it's very pretty here. Now I guess let's do it. You might be reporting it 40 years late, but you have a hell of a witness. Banjo contemplates the viridescent river. I woke up thrashing just over there, he says, pointing. A drifting between a dead rat and a buoyant turd. Hell of a comeback. Hopefully the Golem Guard will cooperate. But, you know, they're the Golem Guard. There's a reason I never reported my murder in the first place. So, ideally, we want to get ourselves access to whatever files they have on my old... friends. The Golem Guard headquarters is a colossal knot of concrete, bulging unhappily in the shadow of the Alchemist's spine. That the Alchemists control the Golems is well known. A common point of speculation is the exact number of secret passages between the two buildings. Inside, the walls are lined with bayonet-wielding Golems. The effect is slightly ruined by the fact that several of them are facing the wall and one is holding a fishing rod instead of a rifle. The corridor ends in a glass-fronted reception desk. How may I help you today? asks the golem behind the glass. It is wearing a clip-on tie and spectacles. What is the tie clipped onto? Because it's a big stone man, right? So what is the... You would think a normal tie would be easier. It's fine. We'd like to report a murder, says Banjo. And the golem guard will solve your crime today, sir or madam, says the golem, pulling a sheet of paper from below its desk. Please fill out this form. We'll solve your crime today. Boy, that's... Uh, I'd love to speak to an investigating officer, please. You spend several hours painstakingly filling out the form instead, <laughs> then hand it to the golem. Its red eyes scan the paper. There's been a murder, it says. Well, why didn't you say so? Referring you to an investigating officer. The officer upstairs is a much larger golem with sculpted abdominal muscles. 
It tries to chew on a cigar as it speaks to you, though it misses its mouth and drops it on the floor. Let me get this straight, bucko, it booms. You're here to report your own murder from 40 years ago? Uh, correct, says Banjo. I have three suspects I'd like to draw your attention to. My old crew. I do the investigating around here, bucko. Can you, can you stop calling me bucko? asks Banjo. The golem officer pauses, draws itself up to its full height, its glowing eyes flare red. Please select your preferred form of address. Available options. Bucko, Kiddo, Buddy, Sport, Bub, Junior, Pal, Buster, Slick, Sparky, Hotshot, Champ? Um, boy. Hotshot's got a nice ring to it. You know, I do like a simple rhyme. The golem officer successfully gets the cigar in its mouth this time, but burning end first. It doesn't notice. Listen up, Hotshot, it says. I do the investigating around here. How were you murdered? That's not... <laughs> okay. I was performing at the corpse and hatchet, says Banjo. It was classier in those days. I was shot through the eye by someone up in one of the boxes. Boom. Brains everywhere. Everyone starts clapping because they think it's part of the show. Can I tell you about the suspects yet? The golem makes a whirring sound that might have been a sigh. One step at a time, hotshot, it says. Now, tell me about the suspects you mentioned. Banjo groans. This is why it took me 40 years to do this. Look, my crew went by the names of Mr. Winter, Mrs. Autumnal, and Summer, says Banjo. No prizes if you spot the theme. The golem shuffles the papers on its desk. We will investigate these suspects in due course and apprehend those responsible for your murder. Well, I don't particularly want you to apprehend them, says Banjo. I just want access to their files. Not so fast, hotshot. That's not permitted. Well, we could bribe him, but honestly, we might be able to just get through this without having to spend any money. Also, I'm worried that attempting a bribe might get us in trouble. So yeah, let's earnestly persuade the golem. You spin a tale of such grief and dreadful majesty that even a heart of cogs and gears must soften. You describe Banjo as a fool, a poor, noble fool, who was taken advantage of, who, tr who trusted too blindly, who was too good for a world that despised him. You shed tears. Banjo sheds tears. The golem whines and clicks. How's Banjo shedding tears? Engaging emotional response, it says. Deploying salt water. A thin stream of motor oil jets from one mechanical eye and splashes Banjo gently across the face. You have activated my tragedy rec recognition protocol. I am willing to be more helpful. Please wait here while I fetch the files. I love that somebody basically wrote this dude to be like... <laughs> so somebody designed this golem for the purpose of basically being a hard-boiled detective. That's just, that's delightful. All right, well, we wait for him. The golem re-enters the office moments later and hands you four files, four names, Mrs. Autumnal, Mr. Winter, Summer, and a fourth that Banjo didn't mention, Doc Spring. We keep very efficient paperwork, says the golem proudly. It insists on shaking both of you by the hand before you leave. Is it bothering anyone else that this one is autumnal instead of just autumn. It's breaking the, th the cr you know, the structure's not parallel anymore, and it's really bothering me. Hey, good work back there, says Banjo when you're outside. He leafs through the files. I'll have a look through these. Uh, come back to me later and we can discuss what I find, he says. Hey, we're doing it. We're totally killing it out here. Uh, let's advertise for a new crew member. Oh, right, it's expensive here. How about the hell? I'm gonna do it. Uh, we currently do not have a navigator. This is what I was hoping for. Also, goat man. Goat men are notoriously insular and xenophobic. Uh, this shaman is the first you've seen away from the tribe, and he seems remarkably well-groomed. He swings a black cane topped by a goat skull and speaks Sivian with only a mild accent. Is that, is that what I speak, Sivian? Well, yeah, I mean, welcome aboard. Better than having an empty slot. And then I think we're good. This was very productive. Uh, is there anything here that we want to interact with? Uh, we do need silk. I guess I should just buy the silk. No sense waiting. Uh, alchemical reagent, soporific draught, not a draft, not actually useful to us. It does save us a small amount of money to buy the warding iron here. So I guess we'll do that. We'll buy the two warding irons we need. And then this is just Blinding Hooch. Who needs Blinding Hooch? 
All right, I think we're good, right? Yeah. We can buy a little bit of fuel, I suppose. Okay. Let's go ahead and save real quick. And I mean, there's no reason to go back to the City of Keys just yet. We may as well head over to the City of Angels, because it's like right there. City of God Botherers, as it's called around here. Oh, very clever name. All right, let's have some... Let's have some words with Banjo. Speak to Banjo about the files. Now, there were only four of us, but we performed heists up and down the house. The Principate, the cities, Ghoul Watch, Lishan, everywhere that was anywhere. Hey, I don't know about Lishan. Have we heard of Ghoul Watch before, either? He flings the first file down in front of you. Doc Spring. This is my alias. I was the talker. Second file, Mr. Winter. The Muscle. Last spotted in Clayton's mill. But, and this is the crucial bit, our informant heard him boast that he was going to hide out in Carapace, down Entomark Way. So that's an important port of call. Third file, Mrs. Autumnal. The Brains. I'm betting she's the one who had me shot. Mr. Winter wasn't stupid, but he had no initiative. And Summer wouldn't... Well, anyway. Last seen in the old Hallow Inn. Final file, Summer. Versatile. Could do all sorts, especially sneaking. No information on her. Alright, well we have some leads to pursue then. Uh, and then I'm not going to spend any more apprehensions on Banjo for the moment. We have another new crew member that I definitely want to talk to here. Uh, turn. Uh, you. Cromlech. So we need a blood-soaked monolith to push his plot forward. By the standards of a goat man, or even the average human, he seems remarkably well-groomed. He swings a black cane topped by a goat skull. Yes, we know this. Well, I can't begin to imagine what happened to it, says Cromlech, stroking his beard. A whole city vanished in a day. Could it have escaped the house? Or is it still out there in a dark room somewhere, waiting to be rediscovered? Okay, so he doesn't know anything. Uh... I guess we'll just return? So we need to find a... a, a monolith. <sighs> you would think eventually I'd get used to it. But I have a remarkable ability to never get used to anything. It's almost like a superpower, except that it really sucks. So I guess it is, in some ways, it's still like a superpower. You know, I'm, I'm just Cyclops. Ooh, take that, Cyclops. Listen, there's nothing wrong with Cyclops. He may be super lame, but also he can really throw a punch. A deactivated golem. You can never have enough of those. You gotta, you gotta beware the fury of punch clops. It's a real, it's a real serious thing. Okay, let's um, let's head south once. Okay, careful. I guess that's a big downside to having additional cargo cars, huh? It becomes a lot more difficult to perform those slick maneuvers. Yep, I did absolutely just do that. The more cars you have, the harder it becomes to drift, you know? Tear down this cairn. Oh no. Oh no, my sanity. I mean, obviously, we're on the way to the City of Angels. To be perfectly honest with you, it probably is better for us to lose some sanity on the way to the City of Angels so that we can roll the dice on the uh, sanity restoration as many times as, uh, as possible. Let's real quick have a chat with you. We'll share news from the city. You share news of the city, and the soldiers respond with things they've seen out in the darkness of the house. Strange things they can't explain, but can describe. So, uh, nothing like nothing like the writing of Lovecraft, then. Sort of the opposite. Oh no, totally comprehensible. Ab absolutely decipherable. I saw a, uh, a thing on Twitter the other day, recently, uh, where somebody had taken some Lovecraft stories and replaced all of the adjectives with spooky, uh, they, <laughs> they definitely read differently. Uh, what did we need to build a statue to the, oh, right, like a whole bunch of stuff. Well, I have the necrosia. The color dust, about it. man, we need so many things. I need so many different things for so many different reasons. All right, let's attempt a, uh, a test of vigilance here to gather news. Hey, we did it. Okay, that, that text is not new, obviously. Test of spirit. Wander the streets for a while. Make a grab for a burning book. Still failing. But hey, you know. Listen, a little bit of extra porn never hurt anybody. 
Do we want to advertise for a new crew member? Probably not at this point. Uh, and then is there anything... Anything we really want to sell while we're here? We do have the angel wine. I mean, no, not really. We don't. We just don't have any interesting business to conduct, unfortunately. We got the news, which is really the like the main value of coming here, and I guess going back to full sanity for free is also cool. Uh, so let's save, and then where do we want to go? You know what I need to do? I need to kind of construct a plan here. We did the easy thing. Now I need to like need to build out a route, and I need to do that thing I said I was going to do, where I make a, a little spreadsheet maybe of materials and what we need them for and where to take them. So I think. What we're going to do for right now is just call it. And when you come back next time, tomorrow, I will have some kind of actual plan. I will have maybe put a little bit of thought into this job of captaining a kinetipede, which seems like an important thing to do, probably. And we'll see you then.